Hello everyone and welcome. Thank you all so much for joining us today for this live stream event. My name is Alexia and I am the project and event manager of the Microsoft Reactor Toronto. Before we begin, I would like to quickly review two items with you, our code of conduct and event guidelines. So first, our code of conduct, please take a moment to review the code of conduct on the screen. Um, Microsoft Reactor seeks to provide a respectful environment for both our audience and presenters. We do encourage engagement in the chat, but please be mindful of your commentary. Remain professional and on topic. Secondly, our event guidelines. This session is being recorded and will be available on demand through our Microsoft Reactor YouTube channel in about 24 to 48 hours. I will be sharing the link for our YouTube channel in the chat a little later. And if you have not been on the live stream through YouTube before, please note that you must create an account on YouTube in order to access and interact in the chat. You can set that up now. And if you're unable to use the chat but have questions, feel free to reach out to us through social media or on Meetup. Which brings us to today's session. I will bring in our speaker, very own Bruno here. Hi, Bruno. How's it going today? Hey, Alexia. I'm fine. How are you? Great. Very excited to have the extended okay. sessions of our March series. Yes, yes. Uh, people basically, we did a couple of series around Copilot using Python, C++, C Sharp, other languages. And uh, hey, TypeScript and JavaScript was the top two requested. This is what we are going to do on April. And here we are. They, they want, want the TypeScript. So let me share my screen and we can start. Fantastic. So <clears throat> hello, everyone. My name is Bruno Capuano. I'm the Club Advocate for the Toronto Reactor. I'm super happy to be here and to share my insights and my lesson learned uh, around how I use Copilot, what I learned with Copilot when I work with TypeScript. Before going there, let me do a quick, quick uh, review about Copilot. Uh, I see a couple of familiar faces. I will say hi later to the, to the ones in the comments, but Copilot is this amazing assistant that we have Initially, Visual Studio Code, now we see different ideas that it will read out code and make suggestions. It's kind of an AI pair programming. It's much more intelligent. It's different, but it will help us to work. And there are several languages that Copilot supports officially, like uh, JavaScript, TypeScript. I think Go is there. There are others that are not supported and they are still compatible. But hey, at the beginning, oh my god, this is Markdown, this is not Markdown, this is TypeScript. And I will show you why I don't use the slides. This is all demo. But when we finish the session in March around Copilot, I talk about how I use Copilot with, type, with Python, with C++, with C Sharp, with Markdown. And at the end, I try to use Copilot to control a Roomba vacuum and a drone. Uh, a lot of people ask if we can do a more session around TypeScript. We can do, we can talk about JavaScript, super popular language. So I said, yes, you know what? I'm not an expert here. I am, this is not my cup of tea. This is not my day to day languages, but I will be happy to learn and show you what I learned here. So right now, an example, I am going to talk, uh, I'm going to show you what I've been doing with TypeScript in the last month since we started this, what I've learned and where I find that Copilot is blowing my mind. I'm talking about type, function, classes, arrow function, which are super cool, lambdas in other languages, and the way that Copilot does this is amazing. So before going there, I always start uh, with a kind of an advice or a warning. Sorry about the crappy demo. Sorry about the bad jokes. Uh, don't use this in production. It's basically time to learn all together. But Quick overview, what is Copilot? Copilot is an AI model that is trained to learn about the code that you are typing in an ID, in a, in a code editor. Initially, it was Visual Studio Code. Now, also, Visual Studio 2022 is supported. You have PyCharm. You have JetBrains writers. Uh, there are plenty of IDs that are supporting Copilot right now. And the idea is, is going to Copilot is going to analyze what are you typing, and it's going to give you suggestions. And this suggestion comes from a model that is called Codex model. And it's a super huge AI model trained with terabytes of code and comments from GitHub and public repositories. It's a full story there. 
And you can find a lot of comments, a lot of blog posts about how Copilot works. The idea here, I will keep it simple, is that once you start to use Copilot, you're going to have usually an inline suggestion in your IDE, and you can get up to 10 extra, extra suggestions to, so you can choose one of these. So this is what we are going to use today. Visual Studio Code with Copilot inside, and then Copilot will do the magic there. And that's it. No more slides. This is go for the demo. I am a programmer, so I like to go to the demo. So if you never use Copilot, if you are completely new to the Copilot world and you want to, to try it, you want to give it a try, just navigate to copilot.github.com. Right now is not a final product. It's in technical preview. And you can sign up here using your GitHub credentials. It's going to ask you a couple of questions. I can't remember but something around what are you using this uh, professional or student or what is your target, kind of stuff like this. And then one day, one week, one month, you are probably this comes, uh, this, they approve the new testers in Waves, you are going to get access to the, to the tool. And just an example, three weeks ago, I asked a friend of mine that he's a JavaScript uh, professional to uh, hey, can you use? Can you help me with the JavaScript side? So he signed up to the to the copilot. One week later, he was in. So it's all about what. Uh, it's all about being there. And hey, once you are there, the cool thing is that you can start using. And how you can use this? So as I said, I am going to use this today in Visual Studio Code. So let me launch code. And once I have code up and running, where is code here? There it is. So let me create a new window here. Here it is. Once you have code here, the idea is that we can go to the extensions and search for Copilot. And we are going to have here Copilot extension. You can install Copilot. And once you install Copilot and singing with your credential, GitHub credentials, you are in. So that's it in the general way how you sign up to Copilot pilots, how you install Copilot. Now let's start to use it. As I mentioned, I am not a TypeScript uh, person. I am not doing a lot of TypeScript. But we have this amazing tutorial in Microsoft Learn, which is basically, uh, it's a one hour, one hour, a little more than one hour, where we are going to what we call a learning path. And hey, I started to do this tutorial. So you have different modules here, getting started, declare variables, uh, implementing interfaces, the type of functions, instantiate classes, so plenty of stuff that you can do here. I really advise if you're new to TypeScript, you can start here. It's a side by side. But what I like here, what I like to do here is that, hey, every time that I learn something new, <coughs> sorry, I learn something new, I make a note to share with you today. So let me create a folder so we can start to test. Go to private, go to labs, let's do reactor TypeScript. So here I am. So I am going to open here my Visual Studio Code, open folder. Here I am. And from here, I am going to start to use a TypeScript. Let me make this a little bigger so you can all read this. So of course, I don't have any file here. So let's do a new file, 01.ts. So this is kind of a standard TypeScript a uh, file here. Let me init the folder. So here in the terminal, I am going to quickly navigate to the root of our folder and let's do TypeScript init. So we have a config file, a JSON config file with the information. And if I compile the file right, right now, let's do 01.ts, I will have my JavaScript file here. You can see here TypeScript, JavaScript, don't have any code, so it's going to be empty. But Copilot is running. Copilot is here in the bottom right. You can see here this icon is Copilot running for me. And what I can do with Copilot? So the hello world here is to do something like this. Function to add to numbers. What you see here in gray is what Copilot is suggesting. So if I press tab here, I will have Autocomplete there, and it's going to start to do the function add. Let's add return a, b, and a. That's it. That's amazing. That's what we want to do. Also, Copilot is smart enough to understand that, hey, if I want to create a function to add to number, maybe I want a function to subtract two numbers. Maybe I want something else. So it's starting to do some suggestion here. 
But remember when I told you that we can see the inline suggestions and we can also see the extra 10 suggestions. So if I press Control Enter there, I am going to start to see kind of a set of suggestions here. When I have the first one, which is suggest me the add, the subtract, the multiply, probably here, tons of code to analyze. It's going to add, subtract. So I start to see a lot of suggestions. This is super simple. This is, doesn't make any sense. So hey, adding two numbers is kind of the, the, the day to day, but hey, it's working here. It's working in combined. But what really, really make my attention, basically give my, okay, what's something that I really, when I was doing this tutorial uh, as a programmer in other languages, what I like it here. So I start to see these union types. Okay, TypeScript, as far as I understand, if correct me, if I am wrong here, you know, the people here know more uh, JavaScript than myself, is that you have different types, but you can define and you can start to work and restrict types in TypeScript, which is not as easy in <clears throat> as you can do in JavaScript. And you can define a function like this one here, which I really like, which is, hey, let's add, let's create a function for add that can get a number as an input. We have a parameter x that can be a number or, or a string, same with y, number or a string. And depending what we have, we are going to do x plus e if we have a number, or we are going to work here with the strings. Let's do concat. Uh, so we are going to concat the string. So I start to see, OK, what's happened if I ask this to compile? If I go back to my code here, and I said something like, let me copy here, function to that takes a number or a string and returns the test number and returns the number plus one. So I'm going to ask a pilot to help me create a function that we're going to accept the number at the beginning and return the number plus one. So with this, let's, <coughs> let's go to the suggestions. And after a couple of seconds, I should get a very simple function, like the first one here, that we have a number, add one, and return the plus one, which I see it's fine. I don't care about the other. But here, hey, this is what I ask Copilot to do, and Copilot make it right. But, but. What happens if I start to do something like a number or a string and return the number plus one? So here I will ask, hey, this function, it will add a number and return the number plus one. And I can ask here something like, if the input is a string, take a look at this. Automatically, Copilot start to understand that maybe my goal is to work also with a string. So if the input is a string, return the string plus one. So let's, I like this one. Like this one, it's also going to suggest something for me to work with numbers. So if the input is also a number, well, remember, this is a very simple function. We don't, we are not adding. I'm going to use just the number. It's going to return the number plus one. So let's do this. And A, it's going to start to suggest probably a lot, a lot of other scenarios with other types. But let's go to the solutions to see which are the solutions that Copilot is going to suggest to me. And this is the moment with <coughs> I start to like that, hey, the first one is makes sense, but it's not covering all of the scenarios. But it's doing what I like. If the type of the first input is a number, it's going to give me the number plus one. Otherwise, it's going to give me the string. So it's going to basically do number or string. If I do something different, it's going to trigger an error. But hey. It suggests the function, and it's also giving me the console to test this, which is super cool. I can start to read the other suggestions. They are going to be very similar here. Uh, let me try to go to the bottom, to other ones. So, hey, in this one, it's doing something weird here. It's going to take an input. and Oh, it's going to subtract. So that makes sense. So it's giving me tons of solutions here. But uh, they are all very similar, so I think it makes sense. So, but hey, I like it. I, I can go back to the first one. Let's go to the first one and accept the solution. And it's going to give me this code. And it's using it's using the feature that the union type that I just learned, which are super super cool. Because at the at this moment, I realize that hey, I can use Copilot intelligence, and I am quoting intelligence, but I can use Copilot to basically help me to check 
the data types in this type of functions. If I go something here, I can put I can put something like uh, I don't know otherwise return undefined. If I do this, I say okay, check for a number, check for a string, or return undefined. The suggestion will be probably with two if and then at the end. Let's accept this. Let's take a look at this. I like this one. We are checking numbers. We are checking strings. Otherwise, undefined, throw an exception or whatever. And I also have here in the bottom tons of console logs. So, hey, copilot and union types, I, it's kind of, it's, this one is working. I like it. So let's do something different. Let's do, let's go to another one that I take, took my attention and I have plenty of demos. Let's see how far we can get. If you have any question, feel free to drop the question in the chat. I will try to, to take, to take the look at the question and answer it in online. But here again, sorry, we have the intersection type. And I like this one because <coughs> I like this idea of, hey, when we have these properties that can be an object that can be one or the other, and it's kind of do a merge, can we ask a pilot to do something like this? Can we ask a pilot to that in, do some intersection? And it makes sense. I am going to go and show later some interface samples, but as far as I understand and as far as I, as I see code, these intersection types are mostly using with interfaces. So I can go back here. Let me go to back to Visual Studio. Let's create a new file here, new file, o2.ts. Here we are. And let's ask a pilot for some uh, intersection scenario. So uh, I am going to copy this. I have it in the sample here. It's going to be faster. I can type in. And my demo is basically create a new type, management employee, that is the union of employee and manager, and then create a new object with a stock plan property. When I ask this, uh, when I ask this, let's wait a second, let's go to the solutions. <coughs> when I ask this, I will probably have the two types, uh, probably need my, let me copy the types. From here, sorry, I missed this. So Copilot is not knowing what to do. I have here two interfaces. Let's have employee and manager. Stock plan is only for the manager. I have employee. So now is the moment that I can start to ask Copilot to give me a solution. So it's going to synthesize the solution. And a couple of seconds later, OK, it's just suggesting comments. We don't like this. We don't want comments. Let me also add the wrap, word wrap. So let's go back here. And let's start to see the solution. So I have my two interfaces. And the output here should be, it's not working. So this is also what's happened sometimes with the pilot, that the scenarios get started to get tricky. And Copilot doesn't find any solution. And what the Copilot is trying to do is basically try to create something and to start to suggest uh, comments. Hey, that's happened. It's not working all the time right now in preview. But this is kind of the, the idea. Let's all ask for one only. OK, so this is make more sense. So I ask for a new type, manager and employee. That is the union employee and manager. And I like this, I like this one because Create a new type, create the union type, the intersection type that I want, and then we start to create a couple of functions. I don't, I don't care about this, but it understands that I am working with interfaces. It understands that I want to do uh, intersection type, and I start to resolve this and I start to work with this like this, which I think is super, super cool. What else we can do? And by the way, if I start to compile this all the time, I will start to have all of my JavaScript files with all of the info here, with all of the stuff here. And hey, let's, let's see, go to TS. So I will start to get all of the info. And as far as I understand here, I will start to have all of the info here. Right now, it's not working. I need to double check my config and my environment. But hey, all of the stuff is there. The next one that I really, really like is working with tuples. I am a C-sharp programmer. I did a lot of C-sharp, so tuples are kind of very popular to me. And if I ask Copilot to do something like this, 
creates a new tuple named person with two properties, name and age, I am going to have, okay, let's use the operator. It's create a tuple, let person, a string number. <coughs> I don't want to use the operator. So let's do this and let's ask for solutions. And here I will have a tuple, person, a string number. Uh, let's go for the next one. It's only one right now. Let's wait for the other ones. So person, a string number when I, in a function, which I like it. But hey, this one kind of works. However, the tuple that I had before is, is the one that I really like, which is basically, oh, not this one here, sorry, which is use the operator, person, a string number. And I can go here and I can say it, create a new person, name it John, and let's see what he's going to do. Let's John, person, ah, and age 33, the operator, person, John, 33. So, hey, if I never work with tuples, this is a good way to understand how a tuple works. And even if you want to create one, you define one. If you want to create a new object, Copilot will, Copilot will help you to get there to create new ones. Then I have the interfaces, and the interfaces took me really, really by surprise, because here I realized that <coughs> I've been working with languages like C Sharp or C, C++, where you have interfaces, where you have a lot of stuff. Here, the, fir the first one that really, really took my attention is not here. Somewhere here is that, hey, in most of the language, usually when you have an interface, you named your interface I, and then the name here is not like this, but everything else works like this. So you have your interface with your field, with your function, with your members, etc. So what's happened here? If I go here, create a new function, new file, o3.ts, and I start to work with interfaces. Again, I am going to, to copy here my, my interface, or let's, let's ask, create an interface. Name it employee that has two property. Employee ID will have three properties. Employee ID, name, and edge. Let's take a look what it's going to do. Somehow it's creating everything with comments. So I have here my interface. I uncomment this. It's, it's nice. It also knows what I want to do and also smart enough to understand that employee ID. Usually it's a number, the name is a string, the age is a number, so we have kind of insights here. And once we have these, we can ask, for example, like, hey, create an employee object, uh, name a John with employee ID one, name a John, da, 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 and age 33, use the new keyboard, it's going to create John, it's going to do everything, and hey, Without writing a line of code, we automatically create an interface. We automatically create also an object. In this case, it's John for an employee named one. It's working here, and it's super, super cool because it will abstract us to do a lot, a lot of stuff. If I go back here and I start to ask, like, a standard interface or something like this, it's going to do more. But other, other scenario that I really, really like was about functions. What's happened when I have uh, this idea of, of arrow function. So in example, let's go back to anonymous function, I'm sorry, to, to create a function that has two numbers and return the result. So I have here, create an anonymous function, add two numbers and return the result. After a couple of seconds, we should have the standard add functions, type it. I don't want the other ones. I only want the add, but hey, this is nice. I create an anonymous function. Anonymous is typed. I think it has a type there, a typo. Yes. But it's requesting two numbers and then. Oh, Unix asks a very good question here. What prevents a beginner from being taught for coding practice by Copilot to do it to suggest you for poorly writing code? Nothing, literally. <laughs> is the same scenario that you will have 
it's not nothing, but imagine that you go to Stack Overflow or you make a search and you find a piece of code and you copy and paste and change it. It's the same scenario. It's super, super hard to track if the code came from Copilot or not right now. I don't know if we're going to have something in the future to see this original piece of code came from Copilot, but right now it's not, it's not there. So, hey, that's something that is, that's a really good question. This is something that we probably need to, to think for, for, for this. Thanks for, for, the, for the feedback. And also, uh, here, going back to the scenario, I really like lambdas. I use lambdas whenever I can, whenever I have the chance. And I learned here that in TypeScript, we have this arrow functions idea, which is kind of a lambda for me, which you came from, in example, C sharp. I do a lot of Python, and this is a Python scenario. And hey, I like it. I will ask the same function, but instead of an anonymous function, let's do the add the arrow function, and I will have the simple way to do it, which is probably going to be kind of easier because I can write this in a single line. But you get the idea. I can ask type. I'm sorry. I can ask Copilot to implement different type of functions, anonymous functions or arrow functions here in different ways. And Copilot will create this function for us, will give us the standard function that we want to do, A plus B, in this scenario for add, but it's going to give us the function in an anonymous way, like add, then we use it, and then it's going to give us the function in the arrow way. Of course, we have an error here because add to, so we don't, we don't have this. And hey, if we can even say add to numbers, Add function is going to do add one by two and the same if I go for arrow function. I don't know if it's going to. Oh, yes, this is super cool. Somehow it recognized that add to is an arrow function. And when I ask a pilot to add two numbers using the arrow function, it automatically makes the connection between these two and make the call between A and B. So hey, it's it's kind of nice to have stuff here. Moving forward, moving on, what else we can do? So I, I know that I couldn't make it all of the scenarios. I have plenty of them. But what's happening with classes? If we're working with classes, uh, I can ask here to Copilot to say something like class, uh, book class. Let's represent a book with a constructor uh, and getter for. Uh, title, name, ESBN, and year. So I am going to here of publication. I'm going to ask a pilot to create a class representing a book, and this class is going to have a couple of fields for year, IC, uh, the name, the year's publication, the title, etc. It's going to take some time. I don't know why it is taking some time. Let's wait for it. But at any moment, come on. Constructor, not the getter. Uh, let's make it simple. So just book. Not working. Okay, there it is. So ooh, it's doing a lot of stuff. It's going. It's giving me a lot. So this is not the class here. So with little name of your publication. So instead of ask for a constructor, I will ask the construction later, and I will ask for these properties. OK, so I have here a new interface, a new interface. Somehow it's still hook in the <coughs> it's still hook in the in the employee, but we can see here that we have here an object, not a class, and somewhere here we should have a class. So I will keep it more simple, book class. So I will have book here, <coughs> and let's close this. I can add here, uh, not constructor, let's add properties for title and ISBN. So I'm going to have title, I'm going to have ISBN. Let's add a constructor for the book class. You see here that is asking me for title, and then ISBN is going to internal, and I can get a getter and setter for title and ISBN, get title, title, set title, 
this title, get ISBN, this dot ISBN, set ISBN, this dot ISBN, and method to print the title, the title line ISBN is going to have a print book void and it's going to do the console. So what I just did, and we are finishing with this, I know that we are on time. I basically create a, cl a class to represent the book without writing any line of code, just with comments and copilot is doing everything. I have more scenarios like generic, working with OpenCV, much more. We don't have time for more. I hope you like it. For me, the learning process doing the, the full module is and the full learning path is amazing. And hey, with, with TypeScript and Copilot, I even learn on the fly how to do everything else. So let me switch back here to my, to my slides. In a couple of weeks, we are going to talk about JavaScript, very similar, but with JavaScript. And hey, if you have some time, please, Complete the survey. Uh, Alexia just shared the survey and the event code. And see you next one. Uh, and hey, I almost, I almost forgot. Feel free to follow us in Twitter, follow our YouTube channel. And hey, see you next one. Goodbye.